So we have been in a series called Game Changers, and what we're doing is we're looking at some different board games, popular board games, games we all play, and each game represents one of the struggles of life that we all deal with. And then we're looking at how the resurrection of Jesus changes the game. The resurrection of Jesus, which we celebrated a few weeks ago, and we're still in the celebration of Easter, we're looking at how the resurrection changes the game. Now, the game for today is Sorry. How many of y'all have played this game? Who has played Sorry? Okay, let me tell you about Sorry. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at this game called Trouble. And Trouble is a game where you have four pieces, and you pop the little pop -o -matic with this one little dice, and then whatever it says, number, you move your pieces around the board, and the goal is to be the first person to get all your pieces home. Okay, that's trouble. Now, sorry, is like trouble, it's just more complicated. <laughs> sorry is a version of trouble that's more complicated, because instead of that one little dice, with sorry, you have cards. And, and the cards say things like this, move from start or move forward to draw again. Move forward 10 or move backward 1. Move forward 11 or change places with an opponent. Move forward 7 or split the move between two pieces. Move backward 4. And then the sorry card, which says, move from start and switch places with an opponent whom you bump back to start. See, it's like trouble, but it's more complicated. Sorry is a form of trouble that's more complicated. Because here's the thing, when you're playing the game of sorry, when you're feeling sorry, you're feeling guilt, there's nobody else to blame. There's nowhere else to point the finger. There's no circumstance or issue or, or, or thing outside of yourself where you can point the finger. No, when you're playing sorry, this is a complicated form of trouble because there's nobody to blame but yourself. And I don't know about you, but I have found that the hardest person to forgive, the hardest person in my life to forgive, is the guy that looks at me every morning in the mirror. The hardest person to forgive is yourself. So what do you do? What do you do when you're playing sorry? What do you do when you're carrying around a load of guilt? I mean, maybe... You're looking back on a failed marriage? Or you're looking back on the death of a loved one and you're thinking, did I do enough? Did I say enough? Was I there enough? Maybe you're looking back on a time when you hurt somebody. You hurt somebody you care about and you saw the pain on their face. And they said, I forgive you but you can't let go of it. You can't forgive yourself. Maybe you did something that nobody else knows about. You lied or you stole something or you cheated and you got away with it and nobody else knows, but you know and the guilt is eating you up inside. Maybe you did something long, 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 long ago and everybody else has forgotten about it and everybody else has moved on, but you can't let it go. You just can't drop that burden of guilt. What do you do when you're feeling sorry and there's nowhere to go to get rid of that guilt because the only person there is to blame is the one that looks in you in the mirror? And the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Let's pray. Father, today I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty because most of us already do. Most of us are playing the game of sorry. Most of us are carrying a burden of guilt that we would love to drop here today and never pick up again. So God, speak to us through your word. We pray in Jesus' name and let all who agree say amen. Well, Peter was playing the game of sorry. Peter was feeling really sorry. Because here's the thing, 
Jesus had called Peter to be his disciple, but Peter kept messing up. He kept messing up. I mean, there was the time that Jesus said, come on, Peter, you can walk on water. And Peter jumped out of the boat and indeed, Peter walked on water and everything was cool until he took his eyes off Jesus and he sank right there in front of everybody. He sank. And then there was the time that Peter stepped up and he was the first one to confess Jesus as the Messiah. And that was great, except that about 30 seconds later, Peter flew in the face of Jesus's game plan and Jesus called him Satan. And then there was the time that Peter stepped up and said, look, Jesus, I don't care what anybody else does. I will never turn my back on you. Then, within hours, he denied Jesus three times. Peter was playing the game of sorry. He felt horrible. He watched Jesus die. And then they came and told him Jesus was alive, but he didn't believe it. He did not believe it. And then he saw Jesus. He actually saw Jesus alive, but it didn't matter. He still felt sorry. He still carried a burden of guilt. He still felt horrible. He still said, oh, I've messed up so many times. I do not deserve to be a disciple. Peter was playing the game of sorry. But then in John chapter 21, Jesus shows up and changes the game. Turn to John 21, if you would, please. If you're using our Pew Bible, you'll find it on page 115 in the New Testament. John chapter 21, and this is the last chapter of the Gospel of John. And so this is happening after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And what we're going to see here is we're going to see how it is that Peter, who was playing the game, sorry, finally dropped his burden of guilt. Let's start with verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. Sea of Tiberias, where's that? That place is also called the Lake of uh, Gennesaret, and it's also called Lake Kinnereth, and it's also called the Sea of, does anybody know? Galilee, Sea of Galilee. So the disciples have gone back to Galilee, back where it all started, and there they are by the Sea of Galilee. And it says, Jesus showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin. We talked about him a couple of weeks ago. Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. Now, why do you think Peter decided to go fishing? Why do you think he decided to go back to his old way of life? Do you think maybe it was because he had given up? I mean, maybe he had just decided, that's it, I'm done. I've, I've messed up so many times. I, I don't even deserve to continue to be thought of as one of the followers of Jesus. And so he said, I'm just going back to my old way of life. I'm going fishing. Verse 4. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. Now, when was the last time we saw this? When was the last time that Jesus said, put your net in, and there was a huge catch of fish so big they couldn't haul it in? When did that happen the last time? It happened when Jesus first called Peter. When Jesus first called Peter to be his disciple, there was that miraculous catch of fish. And you know what? It may have been right there in that very spot on the Sea of Galilee where they were in John chapter 21. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, hey, Peter, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to square one. Let's wipe the slate clean and let's start over. Let's keep reading. Verse 7, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked. Any of y'all ever been fishing naked? <laughs> Apparently, the Sea of Galilee was a clothing optional beach. I don't know, but... <laughs> he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake 
But the other disciples came in the boat. I love that. Peter leaves the other guys to, to get the fish. <laughs> he leaves them with the chore of dragging that fish in. He says, oh, I'm going to go see Jesus. You guys take care of it. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. Now listen to this, verse 9. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire. Not just any fire. A charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. When is the last time we saw a charcoal fire? It was in the courtyard of the high priest Caiaphas, when Peter stood beside a charcoal fire. And John uses that exact description in his gospel. Peter stood beside a charcoal fire, and that is where he denied Jesus three times beside a charcoal fire. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, let's go back to the beginning. Let's wipe the slate clean. Let's start over. Verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. The last time Peter looked at Jesus across a charcoal fire, Jesus was being taken away to die. This time, when Peter looks at Jesus across a charcoal fire, Jesus is offering him a meal. And it's a meal of reconciliation. A meal of reconciliation. You know, like when you break up with your girlfriend. And finally, you get back together, and you go out to dinner to celebrate. That's a meal of reconciliation. Lori and I had so many of those in college. <laughs> or maybe you're estranged from your family. You and your brother have been fighting for years, or you and your mom, or you and your dad, whatever, and finally you get it worked out, and you're going to come to the next family holiday, and there you all are, there you are all together eating Thanksgiving dinner, and it's a meal of reconciliation Jesus comes to Peter, stands beside the symbol of Peter's sin, and offers Peter a meal of reconciliation. Because look what happens in verse 15. Verse 15, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And at this point, I can see Jesus gesturing with his hand like this, and he's pointing out the, the boat and the nets and the fish and the water, all the things that symbolized Peter's old way of life. Peter's old way of life before he became a disciple of Jesus. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, let's go back to the beginning. Let's start over. And notice what he calls Peter in verse 15. He calls him Simon, son of John. That was Peter's old name. That was Peter's pre-disciple name. See, it was Peter, I mean, excuse me, it was Jesus who gave him the name Peter. And now Jesus is calling him by that name, Simon, the name he had at the beginning. It's almost like Jesus is saying, let's go back to the beginning. Let's start over. He says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. In other words, be the shepherd of my flock. So here's what's going on. Jesus takes Peter back to the beginning. He gives him a chance to answer the call again. He gives him a chance to reaffirm his love. And then Jesus reinstates Peter as the shepherd of his flock, the leader of his church. But there's more. Verse 16, a second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Once again, Jesus takes Peter back to the beginning, gives him a chance to answer the call again, gives him an opportunity to reaffirm his love, and then reinstates Peter as the shepherd of his flock, the leader of his church. But there's more. Verse 17, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, 
Do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And maybe it was at that moment that Peter understood what Jesus was doing. He asked him three times. Three times. Three times. And maybe at that moment, Peter understood Jesus asking the question three times was not an act of judgment. It was an act of grace. Three times. Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus gave him a chance to start over. Three times Jesus turned his back on his friend. Three times Jesus gave him a chance to reaffirm his love. Three times Peter abandoned his post as the leader. Three times Jesus reinstated him as the shepherd. That day, Simon Peter dropped his guilt on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. How do I know? Because Peter went back to Jerusalem, back to the city where it all happened, back to the city where Jesus died. He went back there and he assumed his position as, as the leader of God's people. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter, cowardly Peter who had denied Jesus, on the day of Pentecost, he went out into the streets of Jerusalem and he preached to a huge crowd of people that included people from every nation under the heavens. And he introduced the world to Jesus that day. He left his guilt on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and he got back about the business of living for Jesus. Now, what about you? Are you carrying some guilt that you'd like to leave here at this altar? And get back about the business of living for Jesus? Are you playing the game of sorry? Would you like for Jesus to show up and change the game? What load of guilt are you carrying this morning? Pastor Steve Brown tells the story of a woman in his congregation who had committed adultery, and it was years earlier. It's 20 years ago. But, but she couldn't let it go. She, could, she, she felt so guilty, and the guilt just got worse. And, and finally, after lots of prayer and counseling, she decided that she had to tell her husband. She had to tell her husband what had happened. And, and so she met with Pastor Brown, and they prayed together, and she said, okay, I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to tell my husband what I did. And the next day, Pastor Brown saw her, and she looked 15 years younger. She was grinning from ear to ear. He said, did you tell your husband? She said, yes. He said, what happened? She said, well, I, I, I told him. It was so hard, but I told him. And he said, oh, honey, I knew about that 20 years ago. And I forgave you 20 years ago. And I've just been waiting for you to tell me so that I could tell you how much I love you. 20 years she carried a burden of guilt that she didn't have to carry. And I wonder if you are carrying a burden of guilt that you don't have to carry. That day on the beach, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, the risen Jesus came to Peter and offered him a meal of reconciliation. Today, the risen Jesus comes to you, and He offers you a meal of reconciliation. If you're playing the game of sorry, come and meet Jesus in the bread and the cup, and leave your guilt at the altar rail, and never pick it up again.